Welcome back, YouTubers, to another TNA Impact Wrestling Review with us, none other than the British Fist. <laughs> I wish you wouldn't do it so hard like that on the Go Home Shows, Terminator MJ. I'm Mr. Park, and this guy sitting next to me, well, you'll love him even though he attacked me. It's Terminator MJ. Awesome. Subscribe below, above, like this video, comment your thoughts on this edition of TNA Impact Wrestling down in the comment section below. And you better contact us in the link in the box below. Yes, after what happened in the q and I'm still not happy doing the review of you, Terminator NJ, but I guess for the sake of the fans and subscribers out there, I will get through it with as minimal fight as possible. Um, so we had the go-home show going into No Surrender this week. We opened up with the Bound for Glory series video package. They're trying to make this seem like a big deal. Do you think the BFG series will be the main event of the No Surrender pay-view, which has had, let's face it, pretty little hype, and it is kind of a filler pay-view up until uh, Bound for Glory? Well, with this starting to build up the importance it needs to, what they've been building up to, what the importance is, is the Bound for Glory series. So I would hopefully TNA do the right thing. Yes, and uh, I think, to be honest with you as well, I would rather at this point see TNA Impact Wrestling go to three hours because they could fit a little bit more into the shows such as these, which you probably need a little bit more pay view pay pay hype from, really, than a three-hour roll. We'll go straight into it. The opening match we had was the BFG Series match between Jeff Hardy and Samoa Joe. Did, did it surprise you a little bit that uh, that we started with this match, this BFG Series match, which, had, which held a lot of importance in the BFG Series? Well, the fact this match happened to be quite boring, it was most likely best to be the opener. Fair enough. Uh, both guys are pretty over. Jeff Hardy is over for a fairly casual fans. Uh, Samoa Joe is definitely over with the hardcore fans. So the crowd of the Impact Zone has been pretty good lately and uh, it made this match fit a little bit better. The match got quite a lot of time and Jeff Hardy wins very surprisingly with a, with a submission. Um, I was quite, I was questioning, I know a lot of people were questioning the whole Jeff Hardy doing a submission over Samoa Joe, but it did kind of work with Samoa Joe's bad arm after he hit the whisper in the wind. He was selling the arm and he did the, the he did the submission. Plus, he did need a submission victory to go past Bully Ray and RBD in the BFG series. So it sort of made sense. And plus, as we've seen on SmackDown, Shane has got a submission move. So TNA thought, hmm, let's copy that and give Jeff Hardy one. Yeah, TNA also thought, let's copy Nexus, uh, but we won't reveal the identities. Um, so this basically, um, Jeff Hardy gets the victory here. It basically sets up Bully Ray versus RVD as the kind of match that is whoever wins that is going to go through to the final. So that was quite well done. Um, Jeff, Jeff Hardy's face paint. <laughs> what a giant kid. Yeah. What about the interview segment with uh, Samoa Joe when you had Magnus coming in? Kind of like you always come into our reviews and just try and steal the spotlight. You had Magnus coming in saying how Joe ruined the tag team and how he was always the egomaniac and uh, he cheap shots him from behind. Yeah, kind of reminds me of a little segment we had. Um, that I'm guessing now they're kind of giving us the fact that these two are going to feud and that Samoa Joe if, definitely isn't going to win the BFG series anymore. Probably at the pay-per-view they'll have someone like they'll have Magnus cost Joe the match or something. The way they did this was pretty strongly done because obviously when it comes to the end of No Surrender they do need to start continuing feuds and if uh, Magnus wants to face Joe he'll have no chance of beating him but it sets something up. Yeah and indeed and you do, I mean these are two guys you do want to spotlight in some way and if they're not going to have anything to do with the Aces and H storyline why not put them in a... Why not put them in a feud together? I mean, I, I agree with it. Um, you had a backstage segment where Brooke Hogan uh, makes Terra versus Tejmaka at No Surrender. I would have liked to have seen this at Bound for Glory, the whole teacher versus, uh, versus student thing, but we're getting it at No Surrender. At least we have a knockouts match, and it is a match that does sort of make sense. Well, with this match, it's definitely one I want to see, but all I can say is just like the Divas Division, this is absolutely worthless. Yes, and uh, Tara versus Gale is made for tonight. Um, Tara gets the victory after three and a half minutes. It makes sense to make your number one contender look strong at the expense of the ex-champion that was then the longest reigning. It did definitely gave Tara a big match and a big win going on to the pay-per-view, even though it's only a three-minute match. Indeed. Um, but it made Tara, Tara look strong, which is what it needed to do. Um, did you think they had too many backstage segments in this edition of TNA Impact Wrestling Terminator, NJ? There was backstage segments, video packages, and it really kept on repeating, going on and on. And I just really felt that it was too much for what was needed. I'll give my opinion on this. Um, the backstage segments, I think they should really have had less of. But the problem is they hadn't hyped to the pay-per-view that much. So they needed these backstage segments in there to hype to some matches. The video packages could have been safe for the pay-per-view, but they were useful in some segments. 
very much like this next segment where you had Al Snow addressing Joey Ryan. You had the video package of the whole Joey Ryan angle, which is really, if you think about it, it's been worked over a many amount. I mean, it was May where he had the gut check. It's been worked like quite old school, isn't it? In the sense that you've had like one segment every month to hype this feud up. And it does seem like they're going to be doing something, maybe a bound for glory between Al Snow and Joey Ryan, which I would be definitely interested in seeing. Sandow on top of Joey Ryan. Sandow is a lot better at what he does than Joey Ryan. What's that got to do with TNA? Just the fact that Joey Ryan's trying to make for a name for himself. He's going to get Al Snow. As soon as Al Snow slaps him, what does he do? He flees the ring. <laughs> like the cowardly heel that he is. Um, Al Snow wants to give Joey Ryan another, tra another chance. We get the announcement that they're going to have a match. We didn't really get the announcement of when. But I look forward to seeing this angle. I hope Joey Ryan does get a contract here. And I know a lot of people on Twitter were saying, well, why, is G why isn't he facing Taz? Why is he facing Al Snow? Well, the fact of the matter is, guys, that even though Al Snow said yes to Joey Ryan, Pritchard and Taz can't work wrestling matches. So they had to go with Al Snow at the last minute with this angle. So I'm interested in seeing this, when this angle is going to be done. I'm just interested whether they're going to do it at No Surrender or Bound for Glory. I imagine they will do it at Bound for Glory. The interaction between the two was very good, in my opinion, if not second part of Taz and Ryan, but still pretty good. Well, the fact they've built up No Surrender with somewhat of a ma decent matches there, they do need to start working with Bound for Glory, and Joey Ryan going for Bound for Glory, having his first strong pay-per-view at Bound for Glory would be a good move for that. I guess my only question about this segment would be that if it's not going to be on No Surrender, maybe you could have saved it for next week and have maybe an X Division segment here. I just, I'm, just, I'm just pointing it out, that's all. Um... We have an interesting segment between Bully Ray and Joseph Park. Um, you kind of teased here that Bully Ray could be the leader of the Aces and Aces, but we all know that Bully Ray isn't the leader of the Aces and Aces. Isn't that right? I think it's full killer, but that's just me. Bully Ray versus RVD in the Bound for Glory series was our, our main event. No surprise, this is in a prominent spot on the show. Um, pretty, pretty decent match between these two. I think the finish was very good. The Bubba Cutter off the top rope at RKO style. You know, when Randy Orton did that on CM Punk at WrestleMania. Pretty good finish, too, don't you think? This being one of the strong matches of the night with a really good finish. I was really pleased how this went down. Yeah, not just pleased with the match, but pleased with the result as well. Bully Ray goes through and RVD doesn't. I think RVD had no place on the Final Four. So the fact that Bully Ray got the victory, yay. And hopefully that means that he has re-signed with the company long term rather than short term like we think he may have, may have signed. But the fact that he won here kind of says... To me that he has re-signed and that is definitely a good thing for TNA is that not right um you any any other thoughts on this match we'll move on what I'm going to say is that Bully Ray is definitely one of the strong people in this Bound for Glory series and I hope he goes far we had a segment after this which I really did think was a, a, an aspect of the show you had James Storm coming out to announce who he wants to face at the pay-per-view um in, the, in his first match, his leader does get the pick of who he faces. And uh, he gets all the three guys out, and he picks Bully Ray, citing his facts, citing his reasons to do with the fact that he knocked him out of the BFG series last week. He accused him of being the leader of the Aces and Eights. So it looks like we're going to get James Storm versus Bully Ray, a good match in the semifinals in the BFG series of No Surrender. But that also means we get Samoa Joe versus Jeff Hardy, which we just seen on the TV show. I think they maybe could have done it the other way around, so they had two kind of fresh matches on the pay-per-view, rather than just the rather than just having that one good match and the one match you've just seen on free TV. Just saying. All I can say is that James Storm has picked the right opponent because as good as Samoa Joe is and Jeff Hardy tries to show that he's a good wrestler. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, so I, I felt this was a nice way to add on to the fi you know the, the final four of the BFG series being known. Um, and then we had an interesting... So Magnus was interrupting everyone, wasn't he? Kind of like what you do. Um, Magnus interrupted RVD in an interview segment saying, oh yeah, you're an old man and you don't have it anymore, etc. And it seems like we may be getting Magnus versus RVD at No Surrender with kind of last minute build, would you not think? Hmm. Oh, okay. That tells you what you think of that. It's a good job you're not going to be part of the preview. Um, we had an open fight night style elimination process tag team championship match. Um, I think, I guess my problem with this was that I think it shows you the state of the tag team division now when you have Robbie E and Robbie T making it to the final two. It just screamed out to me like, you know, what the fuck? These guys haven't won a match in ages. Why did they get a chance at the title? It just shows you how, how bad the tag team division is in TNA right now, really. Titan Division is dying quickly, and whose fault is that? Yours, I guess. You could say that, but also the fact that they can't really book the right guys in TNA. 
Do you think you could take out the whole tag team division in one go, like Kane does, for example? I take that as a yes. Um, so we get to the end where it's Daniels and Kaz versus a very predictable Chavo and Hernandez. Um, I honestly thought there was going to be a title change here so they could free up Daniels and Kaz. I guess, again, my question here is, I'm not sure why they didn't save this for the, for the pay-per-view, but we got our answer later on. The match went uh, got a pretty good length of time, actually. There was a nice suplex series spot in there where you had Hernandez holding up Kaz and uh, Chavo doing the three amigos on Daniels. That was a nice little tandem move. Um, Daniels and Kaz get the victory after, after using the belts in typical heel fashion. They tried to impress us throughout this match with the moves they can perform, but this match did not impress me. And then we have the overall right winners, the heels getting the win in a cheeky way, and then Hogan comes out. Out comes Hogan, as Terminator Ranger just stated, to announce that it's going to be Kaz and Daniels versus AJ Styles and Kurt Angle for the tag belts. They needed to, to put some match on that card, I guess, and get these four on there in some way or form. They had a very good match at Slammiversary, so I imagine they'll have a very similar match uh, at No Surrender, which should at least be entertaining to watch from a wrestling standpoint. I will say that. Hmm. So it looks like we're going to get, uh, moving on from that, it looks like we're going to get Sanjay Dutt versus Zima Iron at the pay-per-view with no build. Um... As much as I'd like to see that, I would like them for it to got a segment on the show. I really think this is why Impact could go three hours, so they could have like segments like this in, like an X Division segment, which we didn't get tonight. We haven't had for the last, what, three weeks because of the BOT series and Aces and Eight storyline. TNA haven't really put the show up well because, like you said, they missed out quite a few things with all these video page backstage mm -hmm. stuff, so they've really let us down here. We then get to the aforementioned Aces and Eights segments. Uh, you might have a, a vested interest in this, Terminator NJ. Um, we had one of your boys. Well, we think it's one of your boys. Um, we had basically, apparently your boys wanted to do a, some sort of trade in the backstage segments, and you accepted the trade. I'm, I'm interested to know why you wanted to trade such a worthless being, really, for the big guy you had. Well, you'll see in the main event why. I guess so, because we get to the main event, which is the in-ring segment where we get the trade. Um... You know, it all comes down to this. The big guy, who I assume is Luke Gallows, attacks the guy, attacks the trade, and then Ares and the big guy go at it in a big brawl. Or, so, you know, Armbreaker was the name of the guy. Um, so it looks like we're going to get Ares versus Armbreaker at No Surrender. I imagine that's Luke Gallows. Did you think this was an, an effective way to use your faction, Terminator NJ? Well, we took out the worthless mortal, the one that got caught by Hogan out of nowhere, and now we get to this. Ares wants to change one of my boys, but he's going to soon find out how bad we are. Do you think he'll ever get to the leader? It'll be a struggle. I guess so. You have to really work through the ranks if you want to get to the leader of the Aces and Eights guys. You need to uh, yeah, get in contact with this guy. Um, so this is a main event segment. I, I thought the BFG series maybe should have been the main event segment personally, as No Surrender will be all about the BFG series. But... This, this was teased throughout the night, and I guess we got we, we, it did lead to some kind of match of the pay-per-view. Let's face it, Austin Aries did need to get on there, and he goes against one of the members of the Aces and Eights in a fight. So, I mean, I'm guessing you'll have a big vested interest in this one, Terminator NJ. Oh, well, because the Ace and Eights would definitely be at the pay-per-view. Indeed. Uh, what did you think on this show overall, then, Terminator NJ? For a go on show... Yes, it gave us some stuff what we wanted, but not in a strong enough way. I really weren't that entertained by this show. Uh, I guess the best way for me to put this show was that it was a, it was a last-minute show, as in the fact that they didn't have any real matches booked for No Surrender, but we got the three BFG Series matches now, X Division, Knockouts Championship, Tag Team Match, Austin Aries. We got, uh, we got about seven or eight matches announced for the PV, which they desperately needed to do. But the show itself... It was a decent show, in my opinion. I mean, the tag match was pretty good. There was some good segments in there. It was quite, I was entertained. The only thing I didn't like about it was because of the lack of hype they'd given to the pay-per-view, they had to have all these backstage segments and video packages and stuff, which kind of affected my viewing of the show. But overall, I'd say this, this was still a decent to good impact, in my opinion. Any other thoughts in that big brain of yours? we just got the pay-per-view coming up, and that'll be a lot more interesting than this. Indeed, I'm really looking forward to watching the page view. I wonder what your guys are going to be doing. With Mr. Parking out the way, I've got a message for you worthless mortals. I will be there for no surrender, but I also want to remind you about this. Be prepared, mortals, because the worst day is about to come. <laughs>